Good morning, Smoky Mountain. God is good. All the time. Amen. God bless you all for being here this morning. If you're watching this online, we're sure glad you're here with us today as well. It's an exciting day at Smoky Mountain. Amen? We're excited to announce that today we're, we're helping some friends from Knoxville launch a Spanish church here in Sevier County. So we welcome all of our Spanish friends here today. Let's give them a hand. Welcome them. Very excited about that. After, after church today, they, you know, they're, they're going to participate in the service with us today. And after the service today, we're going to go next door and enjoy a meal together. And tonight, they will have their first, uh, their first service here tonight at 730. Uh, so be praying for, for, for them uh, as you do pray for us as well, that, that we can do a lot together and grow the kingdom here in Sevier County. Amen? I remind our elders, we do have a meeting tomorrow night at, at 6 o'clock. Uh, Wednesday night, we do have our Bible study. Uh, we are, uh, we're meeting in the basement, our, our Smoky Mountain, we're meeting in the basement fellowship area. Uh, well, they'll be using the next door area at 7.30. We meet at 6.30, they meet at 7.30, okay? I also remind you that this coming Saturday, we have our, our Where's Valley Ranch, back to help. And I would certainly welcome any help and anybody want to come and tour Where's Valley Ranch and uh, kind of partner with the Lions Club as we, as we uh, serve those children. And uh, just, just, it's a great experience. Never been to the ranch, it's a beautiful place. And I'm sure they'd gladly give you a tour. And it's, it's a beautiful, really cool place. And, um, and so for the month of, uh, of August, as of now, we're staying with ramen noodles, canned ravioli, canned spaghetti, peanut butter and jelly for the Sevier County Food Ministries. That may change, but as of now, we're staying with uh, that, 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 same, that, that same list. So let's all, let's all stand. I'm going to open us with a word of prayer. And then I'm going to turn it over to Mike Householder. He's going to help us with the worship today a little bit. And... Let's just uh, let's go to God and ask him for his blessing and presence to be with us today. Father God, we come before you thanking you for this day and this opportunity we have to come together as brothers and sisters, as the family of God, to worship and celebrate how great and awesome you are. And so, Father God, as we go through this service today, Lord, I pray that our attitudes, our actions, our motives of our heart, Lord, the way we listen, the way we sing, the way we the way we commune around this holy table, God, I pray in Jesus' name that it will bless you and cause you to say, that's, that's my church. That's a beautiful church. I, I love, those, love those, those kids, and I'm so proud of them. And, Lord, I do pray your spirit will come move in and through this, this, this service tonight, today, Lord. And uh, I pray that you'll bless the, the efforts here at Smoky Mountain as well as our, our friends. As they launch a church here in Sevier County, God, I pray your blessing upon that. And may you grow your kingdom through the joint effort that we're going to do to serve you here at, Sevier County, here at Smoky Mountain Christian Church. God, we love you. We praise you. We pray that you'll be with those who cannot be here with us today, Lord, whether they be sick or traveling. I pray that you'll bring them back safely to us. God, we got some visitors are in town today, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name that their time in the Smokies will be relaxing and enjoyable. And uh, they'll go home relaxed and, and, and excited and, and energized and ready to go back home and serve you in their respective communities. And I pray that you'll give them safe journeys back to their, their communities as well. God, we continue to lift up to you those who are in Kentucky who've been ravaged from the fires or from the, the flooding, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name you'll bring healing and calm to, to a, a very rocky situation, Lord. And, and God, we just, give, we just praise you and thank you. You're an awesome and holy God. Now we want to give you our, our worship and praise this morning. It's in your son's name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Destiny, there we go. All right. Glory adios. Amen. It's exciting to be in the house of the Lord. And we're going to worship today. I, we, Jackie and I have been here, what, four or five months, something like that. And so every time we come, there's a different set of people up here, a different type of worship. And so it's kind of exciting to have different varieties of everything. So this morning it's going to be different. Uh, we'll be singing with uh, musical tracks. And, uh, so, and we're going to learn a new song as we go. So uh, if you want to, st yes, let's go. Revive us again, amen? All right. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now God above. Hallelujah, Thy glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Thy glory. Revive us. Again. We 
praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. tracks from an album I did in Poland and that's what we're using here today and this this next song I want to teach you all is one that Jackie and I wrote walking our dogs one day all right hope it's better than it's it, yeah it's a it's a good song anyway so I want we're, we're gonna go through it once and then uh, we'll go through it a second time when I wake up to start my day I pray to you to guide my way. I don't know what my day may bring. I trust in you, that's why I sing. It's a beautiful day to praise you, Lord. It's a beautiful day to see a sun ray. It's a beautiful day to praise you, Lord. It's a beautiful day. When things seem blue and all goes wrong, I need you when I'm not strong. I don't know what my day may bring. I trust in you, that's why I sing. It's a beautiful day to bless you, Lord. It's a beautiful day to stop and pray. It's a beautiful day to bless you, Lord. It's a beautiful day. I pray for you to seek his face and follow him and feel his grace. I don't know what your day may bring. If you trust in him, you do can sing. It's a beautiful day to serve you, Lord. It's a beautiful day to walk his way. It's a beautiful day to serve you, Lord. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, such a beautiful day, it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, such a beautiful day, it's a beautiful day. I'm singing along with myself because I've had bronchitis from Uganda. And so if all of a sudden I, you hear me there and not here, did you know what? 
what has happened. All right, let's do it one more time. Everybody knows it. When I wake up to start my day, I pray to you to guide my day. I don't know what my day may bring. I trust in you, that's why I sing. It's a beautiful day to praise you, Lord. It's a beautiful day to see a sun ray. It's a beautiful day to praise you, Lord. It's a beautiful day. When things seem blue and all goes wrong, I need you when I'm not strong. I don't know what my day may bring. I trust in you, that's why I sing. It's a beautiful day to bless you, Lord. It's a beautiful day to stop and pray. It's a beautiful day to bless you, Lord. It's a beautiful day. I pray for you to seek his face and follow him and fill his grace. I don't know what your day may bring. If you trust in him, you do and sing it. It's a beautiful day to serve you, Lord. It's a beautiful day to walk his way. It's a beautiful day to serve you, Lord. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, such a beautiful day, it's a beautiful day. One more. It's a beautiful day, such a beautiful day, it's a beautiful day. Amen. Every day you rise, it should be a beautiful day because we have the Lord in our hearts. Amen? Amen. All right. Okay. Now we have a special. The uh, Spanish church are going to come here and lead us in Waymaker. Everybody has their Spanish on today? Everybody raise your hand if you got your Spanish. Okay. Gloria al Señor. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. Oh, 
adoraré Milagroso, abres caminos, cumples promesas, luz en tinieblas, mi Dios, así eres tú. Milagroso, abres caminos, cumples promesas, luz en tinieblas, mi Dios, así eres tú. Te adoraré, te adoraré, aquí estás, tocando mi corazón, te adoraré, te adoraré. Abres caminos, cumples promesas, luz en tinieblas, mi Dios, así eres tú. Milagroso, abres caminos, cumples promesas, luz en tinieblas, mi Dios, así eres tú. Milagroso. Abres caminos, cumples promesas, luz en tinieblas, mi Dios, así eres tú. We make it, make it. worker, promise you, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Siempre está, siempre está sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Aunque no pueda ver, está sobrando. Siempre está, siempre está sobrando. Siempre está, siempre está sobrando. Te adoraré, te adoraré. One more time. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise healer, dark in oh, the sí, darkness. Señor. My God, that is who you are. Oh, sí, One more time. Waymaker, miracle worker. Promise healer, dark in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Thank you so much. Dios les bendiga. God bless you. Quiero agradecerles. We want, I want to thank you. Uh, a nombre de todos. In name of our church. Um, cuando entré aquí. When I came in this morning. Sentí el olor de una colonia. I felt this scent like this perfume in this. Y es muy especial y muy caro. And it's, it's very special. It's, it, it feels expensive. Y es, el amor de, y es el amor de Cristo. And it's the love of God that you can feel in this place. Esa colonia. That scent of this perfume. Se llama amor. It, it's called love. Amor. Love. Y el significado de la cruz de Cristo. The significance of the cross. Es que Dios nos amó tanto. Is that God loves us so much. Que dio a su hijo. That he gave his son. Para demostrar amor, to show love, hay que dar. We, to be able to show love, we have to give love. Y es lo que ustedes hicieron con nosotros. And that is what you guys are doing for us. Amen. Amen. 
Quiero decirles I want to be able to tell you que cuando nosotros somos hijos de Dios that when we are sons and daughters of God, tenemos solo un distintivo we only have one difference. no es lo grande de tu Biblia It's not the size of your Bible. no es lo grande de tu edificio It's not the size of your building. no es cuántos versículos bíblicos sepas Or it's not how many Bible verses you might know. No es cuánto digas que eres cristiano. Jesucristo dijo, Jesus Christ said, por esto because of this, conocerán you will know que son mis discípulos, that you are my disciples, en que os améis and that you will love los unos a los otros. One another. Solo es una cosa thing, lo que te identifica como hijo de Dios. Cuando nosotros guardamos rencor, When we keep, um, uh, anger in our hearts, resentimientos, um, just a lot of just hate in our heart, amargura, just, um, bad attitudes, falta de perdón, uh, lack of forgiveness, decía hace unos días atrás a few days back, que es como andar una rata muerta it's like a dead mouse, a dead rat en mi bolsa. In my pocket. Y muchas personas a lot of tienen años have years de andar una rata muerta en su bolsa. Cuando llegan de la iglesia when they go, when they get from the church, a su casa, to their house, no llegan con el aroma de Cristo. They don't with that scent of love from porque the Lord, llegan gritándole a la mascota, because they arrive yelling at their pet, a los hijos, at their kids, al esposo, at their wives, a la esposa, at their husbands, al vecino at their neighbor, y a todo el mundo. And everybody. Y las personas dicen, And say, esta persona this person no me huele a Cristo, smell like me this. huele a una rata muerta. It just like a dead rat. Porque el olor que emana that scent es malo, is bad. no quiere estar cerca de ella. You don't be close to this Aún person. hay hijos que no quieren estar cerca de sus padres, that don't want to be close to porque their dicen parents. no aguanto a mi padre, they say, I can't stand porque my solo grita, all they do is nunca me dice te amo. They never say, I love you. nunca me da un abrazo they never hug me, pero me invita a la iglesia but they me to church, y creo and I believe, que allá and there, huele igual it smells the same. hoy Today, hay que tirar we have to throw away la rata muerta that dead rat y comenzar a oler and start smelling a Cristo like the love of the, Jesus Christ. el apóstol decía The apostle said, revestidos re, uh, re, um, revestidos pónganse put on la nueva ropa this new clothing que es that is, que es Cristo Jesús that is Jesus Christ. cuando nos revestimos so when we get redressed, de Cristo for, you know, with the glory of God, olemos we smell al amor of love de Dios of God. Y donde quiera que vayas, go, sentirán el aroma de Dios. ¿Cuántos hoy dejarán el resentimiento y comenzarán a perdonar? Si tienes años years, de estar en la iglesia church, y no has perdonado, forgiven, comienza a perdonar. Es que me duele. Es que me ofendió. Es que me hizo mucho daño. Pero Cristo Jesús, Christ, a través del dolor, pain, oró por nosotros prayed, y dijo, said, Padre, He said, Father, perdónalos forgive them porque no saben lo que hacen. They don't know what doing. El verdadero amor the true love, es el que a través del dolor sigue amando. And then even though it's coming a through, través they de la ofensa People that offend you, sí, amando. They still love you. A través de los golpes, Even though life, uh, battles, de las heridas, of, of, uh, scars, sí, amando. They still love you. Porque la palabra de Dios Because dice the word of God says que el amor de Dios that the love of God nunca never deja de ser. Will ever stop happening. ¿Tienes el amor de Dios? Do you really have the love of God? 
Si tienes el amor de Dios, if you do have the love of God, eres hijo de Dios. Then you are the son of God. Porque el que ama Because the one who loves, es nacido de Dios. It is born through Jesus, porque Dios es amor. Because God is love. Muchas gracias. Thank you so very much por la muestra de amor for the love that you are showing us, que ustedes nos han mostrado. That you are currently showing our church. Hoy, Today, perdona a alguien. Forgive somebody. Di yo perdón. Say I forgive. Y comenzaré a amar. And I will start loving. A aquellos. All those. Que me hicieron daño. That have hurt me. Dios les bendiga. Thank you so very much. Jose, he's going to be the lead pastor of the church that's going to be meeting here next door to us, and we're so glad they're here. And he just wanted to share with us the love of Christ a little bit for us this morning as we go around this table to celebrate what he was talking about and the forgiveness that was done on that cross, the amora of, of, of Christ. So let's pray, and then our servers can come forward, and we'll partake of this communion. Uh, Father God, we thank you so very much uh, for this opportunity we have to gather here today uh, as one body. We speak different languages, God. We come from different places and backgrounds, Lord. But the one thing that unites us is the cross of Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, the love of Jesus Christ that was so elegantly explained to us here this morning, Lord. And so, guys, we gather around this table. I pray that we will, in our hearts, practice forgiveness. And we'll, you'll call to mind those people and faces that we need to forgive. And, and, Lord, to be like Jesus. And I pray as we go through this communion, Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness you've shown to us through your son, Jesus Christ. God, we love you, we praise you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. As the servers present you with the communion, there will be two cups. The one on the bottom has the bread, and the one on the top has the juice. So I encourage you to commune with God as they, they share this with you. So. <laughs>
One of the things we do here at Smoky Mountain Christian Church every week, as well as uh, per- per- gather around this table to commune with the Lord, we also take up an offering to, uh, to serve the kingdom and to help further the kingdom. And it's through your generous gifts and through your sacrifices that we're able to help our brothers and sisters start a church here in Sevier County next door on our property. And I just want to thank you for that. And as you're giving this morning, uh, this is a gift to the Lord and to his kingdom and to grow his kingdom here. So let's pray about our offerings and uh, let's... Uh, Let's give generously from a, from a heart that, of sacrifice and recognition of the great things God's doing in his kingdom around here. Amen? Amen? Father God, we thank you for the privilege, the opportunity we have to uh, share with you a portion of the blessings you've given to us, God. And, and Lord, uh, you don't need our money to start churches and build churches. God, you could do it by yourself, God. But you allowing us to partner with you so we can partner with each other to further your kingdom here in Sevier County. And so, God, I pray as, as we give these offerings that they'll be a blessing to you. They'll, they'll cause you to smile, Lord, and uh, that we will do it from a generous, uh, sacrificial heart, God. We, we thank you for this privilege that you've given to us to partner with you and partner with each other to serve your kingdom. We give you these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good all the time. I don't know about you all, but more than once this morning, I've been almost moved to tears. Amen. And so if I uh, break down this morning, just bear with me. All right. I learned it years ago, and I suspect that you did too. It goes something like this. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open the doors. See all the people. That was an entertaining exercise for me as a small child, but unfortunately, it was also too descriptive of the local church in many places, including my home church. I'm not sure why it happens, but at times the church becomes content with being willfully sequestered inside the walls of its buildings. And in those cases, to learn about the church, you have to go where the church meets. To see the church in action, you have to attend a church service. To discover the truth about Christ, you have to seek the answers from inside the church building, which was never the Lord's intention for his church. How do we know this? A few years before the church was established, Jesus talked to his followers about being salt and light in the world. So where did we get the idea that the salt needs to be locked behind doors? When did we decide that the light needs to be filtered through stained glass windows? Someone once observed that there are only two buildings where a person could not see what was going on inside. A tavern and a church. One had darkened windows while the other had stained glass windows. That was probably a bit of an exaggeration at the time, but then again, maybe not so much, because long before Las Vegas coined the phrase, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, for far too many churches, some individual Christians were practicing a similar philosophy, what happens at church stays at church. But friends, the first century church was not defined by its four walls, nor was it confined to a worship service or a predictable weekly Don't get me wrong, church, I love the church. I love this church. 
I am thankful for this building and the building next door that serves to enhance and is going to serve to enhance the kingdom ministry. I'm also thankful for the excitement and inspiration that results from worshiping with others who share a common faith and worldview. And I can also testify that some of the most life-changing moments in my life have experienced during a worship service with other believers. But let's face it, this is not a perfect church. Hate to break it to you. But neither was the first century church a perfect and problem-free church either. In fact, I, I don't think I would have wanted to be the minister at the church in Corinth if you know anything about the church at Corinth. Which begs the question. What was the problem? How do we fix it? Write this down. The problem is that it's too easy to become inward focused instead of outward focused if we aren't careful. Oh, sure, we're still passionate for the truth. We still desire to exalt Christ. We still long for the moment of his glory return. But in many ways, we've lost the urgency to go. Many times we're satisfied with offering an invitation to come at the end of every sermon. But I got to thinking this week, what happens when there's no one left sitting in the pews or the chairs that still needs to come? Do we at that point just simply quit offering an invitation? Or do we go looking for more people who need to come. Tom Ellsworth was the longtime senior minister of the Sherwood Oaks Christian Church in Bloomington, Indiana. Several years ago, he wrote a book entitled Beyond Your Backyard, which was a book all about stepping out to serve and bless others. And at the time, he made this very prophetic statement. And listen carefully. He said, in the future, I don't believe come will have much of an impact. Tomorrow's generation of unbelievers will not be drawn to the church behind four walls, but the church that is found serving in local food pantries, homeless shelters, and hospices. We, the church, the church that is found serving in those places, we, we can do no less than go, church. Christians of all generations are called to demonstrate their love, share their faith, and serve humanity, all for the privilege of introducing others to Jesus, end of quote. Tom Ellsworth penned those words 15 years ago in 2008. He was talking about the future, 15 years ago. Today is that future. Because today's generation of unbelievers are not drawn to a church that only meets behind the four walls of a building. They are looking for a church that is without walls. Calling us to back to mind what Jesus had in mind when he talked about his followers being salt and light in the world. You see, there are a great number of people out there who may not be interested in coming to a building like this one or the one next door, right away at least. But they would sure still like to meet. Our Jesus. So church, let's introduce them to Jesus. By stepping out of our comfort zones and meeting them out there where they are. Now I know it can be a bit unnerving to move beyond the safety of these four walls or these church doors. But in the first century church, those early Christians permeated the world around them by becoming salt and light. You see, our predecessors left behind a great legacy for us to follow because if you study those many biographies of those first generation disciples like Tabitha and Barnabas and Lydia and Titus and Epaphroditus and Aquila and Priscilla, what we see is that they changed the world because they went into the world to reach others. And we too can add light and flavor to our world by being a blessing to others, which is why this, today we are starting this new series of sermons that we are calling How to Bless Your Neighbor. We actually started talking about this last week, so if you were not here, let me just kind of give you a quick recap of where we were and where we are heading. We know from Genesis chapter 1 that God created a world that was originally good and perfect in every way. Ecologically, scientifically, relationally, 
morally, spiritually. It was all put together just the way God meant for it to be. But then all of a sudden, sin entered the world and everything started to go awry as heartache and pain also entered the world and the world was no longer the way God meant for it to be. So God implemented a strategy to a guy by the name of Abraham. And this was the strategy that God gave to Abraham. He said, the Lord said to, God, to Abraham, go from your country, notice the word go, from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And all earth will be blessed through you. Now again, you'll notice that at least five times God used the word blessed to communicate to Abraham, I'm going to bless you like crazy. But the blessing must not stop with you, man, because in blessing you, you're going to turn around and bless others. And that's how we're going to win the world back to the way that I meant for it to be. I'm blessing you so that you can be a blessing. And then those who come after you all the way in the 21st century in Sevier County, Tennessee, or in Illinois, or Indiana, or Ohio, wherever you're from, you'll be blessed to be a blessing. And so you see, God introduced a, a strategy, a blessing strategy to Abraham that God wants to continue to do through us. And, and for the next several weeks, we're going to talk about this blessing strategy. And specifically, I'm going to give you five blessing practices from the life of Jesus that we can use to bless people. Go ahead, put that next slide up there if you want, Noah. And like I said last week, these are, are, are things that every one of you can do. And they're going to be really easy to remember because if you look closely, they actually spell out the word bless. And so let's begin with the letter B, which stands for begin with prayer. Now, it's not surprising that Jesus lived this way all the time. And there are all kinds of examples in Scripture of Jesus beginning with prayer. For example, Jesus prayed at his baptism and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He would almost pray before every, almost before every miracle. He regularly withdrew from the crowds to pray. He prayed for his friends that they would be strong. He even on the night before his crucifixion, he was in the garden alone praying. And then as he was being crucified, as my brother Jose said this morning, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. So even while he was nailed from a cross, Jesus was praying, and he was in communication with the Father, which I think is really important point for us, because if you have an enemy in your life, anybody got an enemy in your life? Someone who just, someone who just gets on your last nerves and just stomps them down. I know you've got some of those, right? What if you prayed for them the way you pray for yourself? And see if that doesn't change you and them. Think about the people who, who just drive you crazy and things that you pray for yourself and for your family and start praying those things over them and I guarantee you that you'll begin to, it'll begin to transform your heart. As again, as Jose was talking about, we'll be able to forgive. And I believe it will transform them as well. In fact, what I, found, find, you know, what I find to be so fascinating, we've all heard of the Lord's Prayer, right? But do you remember what happened before Jesus taught his disciples, the Lord's Prayer? They said, Lord, teach us to pray. And it's worth noting that at this point in Jesus' ministry, they had seen Jesus do all sorts of incredible things. They've seen him walk on water. They've, they've seen him give sight to the blind and make the lame walk. They've, they've seen him multiply food and drive out demons. So apparently the disciples of Jesus had gotten a glimpse of all of that and somehow they made the connection and knew that prayer was at the heart of it all. So, even, so they could have asked Jesus for anything, but instead they chose to say, Lord, teach us to pray. So in the life of Jesus, there was this ongoing demonstration of prayer. But this morning, there's one particular example of Jesus praying that I want us to consider. So if you have your Bibles with you this morning, if you use the Bible app on your phone or device, open them with me to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, we're going to look at verses 12 through 16. Luke chapter 6, verses 
12 through 16. One of those days, Jesus went out to the mountainside to what? Pray. And he spent the night, the whole night, praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him. Now, this might have been just the 12. This could have been 72, 120. There was probably more than just the 12 he calls to him. And he chose 12 of them, 12 out of how many was there, whom he designated apostles. Simon, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, became a traitor. Now, this seems like a strange passage a little bit to reference when it comes to prayer, doesn't it? I mean, there's so many other passages that I could go to. Why go to this one to talk about prayer? But there's something that I want you to notice here especially and how it will pertain to how we bless our neighbors and how we can live out the mission of the Smoky Mountain Christian Church which is to be a church that leads in loving, serving, and growing with, each, uh, with, other, with God and with others. Jesus wanted to know who the select few were that he should invest his life in. Who were the people that he needed to connect with in a short three and a half year ministry? Now, what I'm about to say next is purely conjecture on my part, but as you know, I've kind of been watching The Chosen a lot lately, preparing for what we're going to do this fall. I think the creators of The Chosen kind of agree with that because from the very beginning, we kind of see that Jesus had a ton of potential candidates. He didn't have to go to monster.com to find people who would become his 12 primary disciples because we can imagine that there were a lot of people who were clamoring for that opportunity and there was undoubtedly a lot of people he could have chosen. And honestly, there were probably a lot of people with great leadership skills. There were probably some people out there who had a, a really solid pedigree. They came from a solid pedigree. There was probably people out there with great social and e emotional intelligence. But we read in verse 12 of our text that Jesus spent the whole night in prayer because he knew the stakes were really, really high. And unlike some of Jesus' other recorded prayers, we don't know what exactly was said in that all-night prayer, but what we do know is that in the morning, he had clear direction. I, I, I never really thought a lot about this till recently, but he knew that the mission he was inviting them into was so important, the stakes were so high, that he withdrew for an entire night and asked for some clarity who would partner with him. And in the morning, he made his choices. And by the way, you know this, these were some odd choices, weren't they? I mean, this was not the A team of people where if you lined them all up in a line, imagine them making the cut. These, 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 these dudes, man, they, they, were, they were in many ways a sorry thing, right, when they first met Jesus. But Jesus shows them to begin something that would absolutely transform the entire world for all eternity. And so if you're taking notes this morning, why is it so important that we begin with prayer? But when we begin with prayer, God will give us clarity, just like he did for Jesus. And to who, where, and how we are to go about this blessing strategy. Don't you yearn for that kind of clarity? Where you say, God, there are a, there are a lot of people in this world. But God, I want to ask you, who are the ones that I am to love? that I am to care for, that I am to serve, that I am to really hone in on, that I am to bless and point to Jesus. If we begin with prayer, I believe that God will give us clarity. Amen? Amen. Secondly, when we, when we begin with prayer, we open ourselves up to the Spirit's leading. When we begin with prayer, we, it focuses our mind and we, we receive direction for how to live our lives. 
Hudson Taylor was a British missionary to China. He said it best when he said, and I quote, Do not have your concert with God first, and then tune your instrument afterwards. Begin the day with the word of God and prayer and get first into harmony with him. Isn't that good? It doesn't make sense to play the concert first and then tune your instrument. It's the idea of tuning our instrument to join in the song of our creator to restore his dream to a broken world filled with the cacophony of noise. But we get to tune our instruments to the one who made us, who knows us and loves us. And we do that through prayer, through communicating and spending time with the father. Mother Teresa spent most of her life, by the way, last week I talked about smiling. I love this picture. Begin with, peace begins with a smile. Isn't that great? She spent most of her life ministering to the poor, suffering in the slums of Calcutta. And we've all, we've all heard stories. I've probably told stories from this platform, how she seemed to always see the person, their need, how to meet that need. I recently heard a story about a time that Mother Teresa was in Australia and she came across an elderly aborigine man who lived in absolute squalor. Mother Teresa wrote, and I quote, I can assure you that you have never seen a situation as difficult as that poor old man. And she saw a lot of stuff. But she said that about the man. It was a sad situation. Now, I must confess, when I try to imagine myself in Mother Teresa's shoes, I'm pretty sure that I would feel helplessly incapable of helping. But Mother Teresa was so in tune with her father, so in tune with, with God's mission, that she always knew what and how to meet a need. So she told this man that she was going to clean his house, wash his clothes, and make his bed. To which he said no. But her insistence overcame his refusal. While cleaning his house, Teresa discovered a lamp that was just covered in dust. And it was just caked in dust. And she asked the man, don't you light your lamp? Don't you use your lamp? And again, he answered, no. And then he said, no one comes to see me. I have no need to light it. Who would I light it for, he said. And then Mother Teresa asked him, well, would you light your lamp if the local nuns came to visit? And he replied, of course. That very same day, the local nuns came for a visit, and they committed to visiting him every evening. Two years later, Mother Teresa said that she almost completely forgotten about that man until she received a message from, his, from him which said, tell my friend, Mother Teresa, that the light she lit in my life continues to shine. Isn't that an amazing story? I'm ashamed to admit that if I met that man cleaning his house and making his bed would not have occurred to me. If I saw that dusty old lamp, I, I wouldn't say, don't you light your lamp? I would have said, huh, that sure is a dusty old lamp, right? Now, I know what you're thinking. I get that using Mother Teresa as an example to follow seems a little out of reach for many of us in this room. But what strikes me about that story and many others I've heard about her or read about her is that the fact that she, that she did something that any of us could do. Think about it. She didn't write this man a huge check. She didn't perform a complicated surgery. She simply blessed him by what? Making his bed and washing his clothes. Now again, it's tempting to think, well, preacher, that's Mother Teresa. She's a nun who lived in the slums on the other side of the globe. I could never, on my very best days, measure up to her. All right, I hear you. So let me tell you about Linda Wilson Allen who is featured on the front page of an article of the San Francisco Chronicle. Linda's no nun, because as you'll see in this next picture, she's a Metro bus driver. So why was she the subject of a full page article? Because Linda loves the people who ride her bus. 
as simple as that. A reporter for the Chronicle rode her bus and he, and he couldn't figure out what was happening on her bus. Linda knew all the regulars. She had learned their names. She would even wait for them if they were not at the, at the bus stop on their regular time. She would wait till they got there. And, and then one day the reporter watched Linda get down out of her bus, out of her bus, and help an elderly woman struggling with all of her heavy groceries get up onto the bus. There was another lady that, 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 that was new to town and Linda invited her over for Thanksgiving dinner. The reporter learned that there was story after story of that, of Linda Wilson Allen connecting with and blessing and serving the people who ride her bus. Now again, if I'd been a metro bus driver, I don't think I would go out of my way to bless and serve my passengers. I've got a schedule to keep, even though it sounds so simple. But if we begin with prayer... And tune our instruments to the one who made us, knows us, and loves us. It will open ourselves up to God's leading and working in our lives. Back to Mother Teresa. In an interview with Mother Teresa, she was once asked what she did in the morning. And she answered, I pray. To which the journalist asked her, when do you start praying? And Mother Teresa said, half past four. And then the journalist asked her what she did after she prayed. And Mother Teresa said, we try to pray through our work by doing it with Jesus, for Jesus, to Jesus. So in case you missed that, after Mother Teresa began with prayer, she kept on praying. Mother Teresa was also asked what special qualities allowed her to be to be such a blessing, to make such a massive impact. And her response was, and I quote, I don't claim anything of the work. It is his work. I am like a little pencil in his hand, that is all. He does the thinking. He does the writing. The pencil has nothing to do with it. The pencil has only to be allowed to be used. In a like manner, the San Francisco Chronicle article about Linda Wilson Allen, the mystified reporter asked her how she's able to have such a loving attitude and take such a servant heart towards those who rode her bus. I bet you can't guess what her answer was. Her mood is set at 2.30 a.m. when she gets down on her knees to pray for 30 minutes. John Ortberg, who's a well-known author and pastor in the San Francisco area, brought Linda Wilson Allen to his church one Sunday and, and interviewed her during the service. And, and he asked her about her 2.30 a.m. prayer time. And she said, we talk. That's it. We just talk. I ask God to show me my life, and he shows me my life. He puts things in front of us. He, he could be working on my patience, or it could be someone less fortunate than me, than, than, than I, and, so, and to give them some shoes, or, or whatever that case may be. She said, he'll, he'll show you. That's where my kindness comes from. And then John asked her if she prayed while she was on the job driving her bus, and, and she replied, yes, when I'm there doing my job ministering, she said, I call it ministering, God will show you things. He will show you the senior citizen who's having a hard time getting up on that coach and, and how to take, take, it real, take it in real gentle and, and set it down right in front of her. He'll, he'll teach you the, the one who's in the back of the bus who's, who might not have enough money for their fare. and He'll say to you, why don't you, just, why don't you just let them pay what they can? He'll teach you these things, she says. He just shows you. I find it interesting that Linda Wilson Allen calls it, she doesn't call it driving, but instead she calls it ministering. And like Mother Teresa, she began with prayer and she kept on praying. Now that being said, here's my challenge for us today. It's not some fancy pants challenge, it's just a challenge for you and I to set aside time to pray. That's my challenge for you. And whenever, whatever that looks like for you, if we just committed to setting aside some time to pray every day, it doesn't have to be an all-nighter like Jesus. 
or at 2.30 a.m. like Linda Wilson Allen, or half past four like Mother Teresa, but it can be five minutes at the beginning of the day, or five minutes at the end of the day, or maybe you set your, your phone, you set the, the alarm on your phone to go off at a certain time of the day, during lunch hour maybe, and you use your lunch hour to, to pray. Whatever that looks like for you, what, what kind of change could take place in our circles of influence, in our community, in our workplaces, in our schools, in our neighborhoods, and in our church if we simply set aside time to pray, if we begin with prayer and we keep on praying as we're going through our day-to-day -day activities of serving Jesus, being Jesus, to Jesus. And so with that thought in mind, let me quickly give you uh, some to begin with prayer tips. Number one, uh, plan. Plan to pray. You know, I, many of us, if we don't put it on the schedule, we won't do it. Let's be honest. We plan everything else in our lives. Why don't we plan to pray? Martin Luther once said, I have so much to do today that I need to spend the first three hours of it in prayer. Now, on the one hand, that sounds so counterintuitive we're on the days that we wake up and we're most busy you know those days when you wake up you look at your calendar you look at your phone calendar and and you're like man i have so much to get done today prayer can wait until tomorrow but martin luther understood something about the power of prayer and our connection to god through prayer where we must say i have so much to do today that i make i must make prayer a priority I think Martin Luther understood that just one word from God is worth more than a thousand words from anyone else. He understood that in such a profound way. But here's the thing about our prayers, church. We think, well, I, I don't know how to pray, preacher. We, we think that we got to have a certain kind of language. we got to say certain things the right way. We, we think we gotta, we got to get into a certain posture or something like that to pray. Or, or we got to have a certain attitude or mindset. But here's the thing about our prayers. Write this down. This is, this is profound. God is far more interested in our sincerity than our stage presence. In other words, you don't have to use all the right Christian words, what we call Christianese, to get God's attention. You don't got to have the, the right posture to get God's attention. He is far more concerned with our sincerity our stage presence. Number two, we, 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 we pray that God, for God to prepare our hearts. You know, our, our prayers are oftentimes world peace prayers, where we implore God to do something out there, outside the four walls of our church. Do something out there, God. But it's just as important, if not more important, now we ask God to do something in here. God, work on my heart. Expose in me the stuff that doesn't look like you, which is toxic to me and to the people that I love and want to bless. With that thought in mind, many of us have prayed and we keep on praying for God to do something through us. We all want God to do something through us because we want to make a difference in our neighborhoods in our communities, in our schools, in our workplaces. We want to impact a certain neighbor or a classmate or a, a co-worker, and, and we're trying to do something different in our marriages or, or as a parent, but, but nobody seems to notice or seems to respond. And we know that we need to do something, and we keep praying that God would show us what to do, but what if we first prayed a different prayer, and instead of praying God for do something through us, what if we prayed, God, do something in me? What kind of difference could that simple prayer make, not only in our lives, but in the lives of those people we're trying to bless and impact? So again, let me challenge you to set aside some time every day to pray. For God to do something not only through you, but in you. Ask God to search your heart and point out anything that needs your attention. Pray that God would give you the ears to listen and the eyes to see the people and the places around you that you can bless. Pray that he, that, that he wants to say through you and do through you will, will overflow, out of, overflow out of what he's doing in you, in your heart. Which brings us to number three, if you're taking notes. Ask God to bless the people and places he's calling you. 
worthless. If you'll do this with a pure, sincere heart, I fully believe he will bring to mind some specific individuals, some specific names and faces. I also believe that God can and will do give you a vision for your neighborhood or for the floor in your apartment building or for the staff at the convenience store or the coffee shop that you frequent. But who are those people and places God has called you to bless? And the key in all this involves listening because Far too often our prayers are all about giving God our list of things that we want God to do. But rather we should just listen and say, God, what would you have me to do? The Archbishop Fulton Sheen brilliantly said it. Prayer begins by talking to God, but it ends listening to him. In the face of absolute truth, silence is the sole language. Listen, church, this is so crucial don't just pray. Don't just set aside time to pray. But learn the sacred power and discipline of being still before God. Where we actually say, God, I'm listening. What do you have for me to do? What do you want me to do? I was recently reminded of a story that I heard several years ago about a woman that many of you are probably very familiar with named Beth Moore. Uh, she's an incredible Bible teacher, incredible author. Uh, she tells the story about sitting at an airport waiting for a flight. She had her Bible open and, and uh, she had a, she'd been kind of reading her Bible, praying while she waited for her flight. And while she was praying, she noticed an old man sitting there in a wheelchair Really, really thin, really kind of just slumped over. His hair was really long and tangled, and, and she said he was just, he was just a mess. Beth Moore says she tried ignoring. She tried not to make eye contact. But then something within her began to stir. And here's how she described that experience. I've walked with God long enough that I can see the handwriting on the wall. I've learned that when I begin to feel what God feels, something so contrary to my natural feeling, something dramatic is about to happen. I immediately began to resist. I started arguing with God in my mind. Oh no, God, please don't make me witness to this man. And then I heard it. I don't want you to witness to him. I want you to brush his hair. The words were so clear. My heart leapt into my throat, and my thoughts spun like a top. After numerous minutes of trying to argue with God, she awkwardly tried to approach this man, knelt down beside him, and she asked him, May I have the pleasure of brushing your hair? To which the man responded in volume 10, Little lady, if you expect me to hear you, you're going to have to talk a lot louder than that. So at this point, I took a deep breath and blurted out, Sir, may I have the pleasure of brushing your hair? At which every eye in the place stared right at me. I watched him look up and down at me in absolute shock on his face. And then he said, well, if you really want to. Are you kidding me? Of course I didn't want to, but God didn't seem interested in my personal preferences right about then, she said. Yes, sir. I'd be pleased. But I have one problem. I don't have a hairbrush. And the man said, I have one in my bag. God has a sense of humor, doesn't he? So Beth got the hairbrush out and started brushing, and then she writes about what happened next. A miraculous thing happened to me as I started to brush that old man's hair. Everybody else in the room seemed to disappear. There was no one for those few minutes except for me and that old man as I brushed and brushed and brushed until every tangle was out. This sounds so strange, but I have never felt that kind of love for another soul in my entire life. 
I believe with all my heart that for a few minutes I felt a portion of the way of the very love of God. The emotions were so strong and so pure that I knew they had to be God's. After she had finished brushing his hair, she knelt back down in front of the elderly man. She put her hand on his knee. She looked him in the eye and she said, Sir, do you know my Jesus? He said, yes, I've known him since I met my bride. I had open heart surgery recently, and she was too ill to come see me. I'm about to get on this plane to return home to see her. And I was just thinking to myself, what a sad mess I will be for my bride. Thank you for just brushing my hair. And this is what Beth said about this incident. Only God knows how he often allows us to be part of a divine moment. Like I was four weeks ago when Carlina walked up our driveway. Completely unaware of the significance. This was a God moment. And I will never forget it. I don't know about you all, but I'm not simply content with hearing stories like this. Because I want to live them. I don't want to simply share these stories as a sermon illustration to all of you on Sunday morning. I want them to be the story of our lives. I want them to be the very DNA of our church, Smoky Mountain, of our families and our communities to be marked by people who stare in the face of truth, absolute truth, and say, God, what do you have for me today? Who do you want me to talk to today? Who do you want me to serve and bless today? If it's strange and awkward and hard to understand, what would it look like for we to begin to pray every day, God, where do you want me to go next? Friends, I still believe in the two-fisted children's poem has value. But as we look to the future, I would like to suggest that we that we teach a slightly modified version of this to our kids and our great grandkids. Here is the church. Here is the steeple. Open the doors. And send out all the people. It's time that we break out of these four walls, that we knock down these doors and send out the people because there's no limit to the number of practical ways that we can bless and serve others in Jesus' name and make an eternal difference. I hope you still have your notes out this morning. If you don't, maybe you can get a piece of paper out because I want to I do something differently this morning as I wrap this up. I don't want us to simply talk about this. What would it look like to actually allow God to enter our lives in ways he never has before, in ways we've never asked before? So, who are the people and places God is asking you to bless? Maybe you already know, and throughout the course of today, certain names and places have already come to mind. So, write them down right now. Write them down right now. Others of you might be like, you might be, you, you might be like, you know, I... I don't know. And so right now, begin with prayer by asking God to reveal them to you, saying, God, I'm staring at a blank piece of paper right now. I have blank lines. I have no idea. Prayer is where it starts. What would it look like for us to simply sit in his presence and be still? Maybe God has spoken to you this morning and brought to mind people and places you've never thought about blessing. The question is, do you have the courage to actually put pen to paper right now? Maybe a name has come to mind that you're, you're like, God, no, 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 no. Please, anybody but them. Any place but there. So here's what I want us to do for the next couple of minutes. I'm going to invite you wherever you are, online, in this room, to close your eyes, bow your heads. We're going to go before God together. We're going to ask him to do something in our midst. 
to be a way maker, to show us the way this morning, to bring some names and places of people and places that we can bless. And here's what I want to do as I pray for this. I'm going to pause every now and then for you to listen and hear from God. And here's the, here's the thing. If God gives you a name or a place, I give you permission on the authority of God <laughs> to open your eyes and lift up your head and write down the name or the place as I'm praying. In fact, if I see a bunch of pens working as I'm praying, then that tells me that God is doing something in our midst. Please, God gives you a name or a face. Don't resist the spirit prompting on you this morning. I can't, I'm, I'm so thankful that God brought Carolina up to our driveway a few weeks ago. And I didn't just turn her away. I do got to confess something to you. I fe- confess this to Carlina and to my elders. Some of you, your preacher is sinful at times, believe it or not. When I saw Carlina walking up the driveway, my wife was sitting there and I, and I said, oh crud, someone asking for a handout. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for coming, not giving up. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you this morning, Lord, asking you to move in our midst. To show us, God, tell us, God, speak to us, God, what you would have us to do, who you'd have us to bless. And so, God, over the next few seconds, I'm I'm just going to shut up, and I'm going to let you do the talking. I'm going to ask your spirit to give us some names and some people and some places that we can start to bless this week. God, talk to us. Again, if a name or face comes to mind, Write it down. So, God, we, I think we've got some names and faces in our hearts and our minds now. God, I pray now in the days and weeks ahead that you'll begin to open doors of opportunity for us, God. You'll put them in our paths, just like you brought Carlina to me, Lord. But you'll just put these people in our paths that we can't turn them away without blessing them like Beth Moore, like Mother Teresa, like Linda Sue Allen and serve them. So God, I pray pray you open those doors to us this week and give us the courage to step into that. God, again, I pray that you'll do something in our midst. It's in your precious son's name we pray and all of God's people said. Stand with me. What a friend we have in Jesus, amen. And this morning, maybe God has spoken to you through the challenges I've given you. Maybe, maybe there's another challenge. Maybe God is saying, hey, I, I need Jesus in my life. And I want to encourage you to step forward and say, hey, I believe Jesus is the Christ. And we'll walk you through that process. Or maybe you, you need some prayer. We would gladly pray over you this morning. Maybe you want to become a part of the ministry at Smoky Mountain. Won't you come as we sing this song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, what peace we often forfeit Oh, what needless pain we bear All because we do not carry Everything to God in prayer Have we trials and temptations 
chance Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged Take it to the Lord in prayer Can we find a friend so faithful Who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness Take it to the Lord in prayer For we can have it Come but with the Lord of care Precious Savior still our refuge Take it to the Lord in prayer Do thy friends despise for stay Take it to the Lord in prayer In his arms he'll take and shield thee Thou will find a soul a Take it to the Lord in prayer God is good all the time. All the time. And God bless you all for being here this morning. We're not done. I want to invite you all to come next door. We're going to share a meal with our new friends and fellowship with them and, and encourage them and bless them. And even if you didn't bring food, stay. Hang out. There's always plenty of food. If not, I'll give up my chicken and my plate for you as well. Please stay. All right. You can have, you can have seconds, Rick. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, I guess you got one more song. One more song. I want to say. When I was little, I learned that thing too. Here's the church. Here's the steeple. Open door, there's the people. Yep. Actually, here's the place. The steeple is optional. Open the door, and there's the church. We're the church. We're not the people. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All right, we're going to sing. Um, I, I did want to ask one other question. Uh, is, it a, is it a rule here that when you serve uh, community, you wear a, uh, Hawaiian. Hawaiian shirts? I saw that this morning. Still our new dress store, right? I guess so, you know. All right, we're going to do a medley. Uh, <laughs> um, rejoice. This is a time to rejoice. And uh, I've got Peace Like a River and uh, Lily of the Valley. So it's a medley that uh, uh, we'll try to get going, okay? Let's go. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Well, this little added stuff here. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right, come on. Let's go. Come on, everybody. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. Again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. Again I say rejoice. All right, amen. Everybody knows this. I've got peace like a river, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got love like an ocean, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Back to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, again I say rejoice. rejoice, rejoice, rejoice Amen. I found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He's the lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. 
sweeping and sweeping up to glory I see his blessed face where rivers of delight shall ever flow he's the lily of the valley the bright and morning star he's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul Rejoice in the Lord always again I say rejoice Rejoice in the Lord always again I say rejoice 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 again I say rejoice 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 again I say rejoice 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 again I say rejoice 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 again I say rejoice Let's go out here today and rejoice. Amen. Hallelujah.